This week's Opal GT how-to video is about how to repair the angle drive on the early Opal GT transmissions. Uh, this is what drives the speedometer cable to the speedometer and uh, the angle drive one is only on 1969s and 1970 GTs. Uh, it, it'll be pretty obvious which one you have when you go look under the car. So this was something I'd never done before, and I did get a few things wrong in the video. But in the end, everything came apart like it should, and I was able to get it put back together. I could do it much quicker this time, um, this time around. So watch the video. I'll, I'm going to leave in some of the some of my errors, and uh, I'll be sure to point out what I did wrong and what to do instead. But it's it's part of working on these cars is. Um, making some mistakes and um, finding your way, finding out what you did wrong. And so this, is, this was one of my more fun videos because of that. So here's our 90 degree angle drive. Um, this is the pin that holds in the assembly here. And we have to pull this out. This head is very soft. If you twist it, it's going to shear off. If you um, pull on it with a pair of pliers, it'll probably also shear off. So, I'm going to try and pry it with a screwdriver. I don't know how that's going to go. It might shear off too, but if it does, we'll figure out how to get it out with some vice grips maybe. From the factory, Kent Moore made a tool that was uh, it hooked onto this and it, um, you pulled it out with a slide hammer. Fortunately, they don't make those tools anymore and they're almost impossible to find. So we got to find our own way to get this out. So I'm going to try and gently pry this. It's moving the whole transmission instead. There we go. Okay, here's a good pry point right here. I'm going to get a hammer and put some taps on it instead of actually prying. Since it was originally taken off with a slide hammer, that might work. Okay, and let's tap it, tap. Yeah, I just can't get a good shot on it. Oh, man. Okay, we're gonna try vice grips. Alright, I'm gonna wiggle this. I'm gonna try not to twist it, give us the best chance of not shearing it off. I'm just gonna wiggle and pull. Put a screwdriver through the vice grip and hit it with a hammer. Here we go. I think we're actually getting somewhere. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I just have a screwdriver through this end of my vice grip and I'm giving it a couple light taps. Let's see. Do some more wiggling. Oh, there we go. Got it. Focus, focus. There she is. So vice grip, wiggling, and a hammer. Worked for me. All right, so it was a 22 millimeter. And look at this, I haven't even loosened it yet. That's how tight it is. You don't even need a wrench. Well, at least mine doesn't. Here's a little lesson about working on things that you have no idea how they go together. So you don't take that pin out first. I did that wrong. Leave the pin in and then unscrew this. If you take the pin out, this will just spin forever. Um, so I don't want to put that pin back in, so I just put a small bolt in there. Uh, when you rotate this, uh, eventually that hole will line up with the hole in the housing and you can slip something that's a little bit smaller in there. And then this just unscrews normally then and uh, it should come out no problem now. Much better. Okay, so here we have the um, 90 degree angle drive. We'll be taking that to the workbench to look closer at it in a minute. 
Um, let me get something to wipe up this gear oil that's coming out. There. So we'll leave that alone for the moment. Um, and see if we can find anything in the service manual about this. The 1970 service manual does not show anything useful. It says, removing speedo driven gear. Um, so it does say to use the wrench to unscrew the angular drive holding nut first. Um, I didn't do that, so do that first. Be sure to read before you do things like these, unlike me. Um, then it says remove the lock pin, which we did. And then it says using tool, remove the speedo driven gear assembly. Uh, so let's see if we need to do that. Opal GT source sent me something with the speedo gear seals. Okay, so here's our, um, here's our part now. I went ahead and uh, cleaned it up some. So this is not where the O-rings go. Uh, I've been mistaken before, and I will probably be mistaken again, even in this video. But this is a very nice part if you look at it. Um, looks like a, the gears and everything are were pressed in, and then uh, this cap put on, if I were to guess. Um, so this is where the speedometer angle, um, the speedometer cable connects. So this turn, there's a gear system in there. Doubt it has any reduction, but um, this is a 90 degree gear set in there. And then um, there's a cable on the transmission that goes into this and turns it from this side. So it's a really neat design. Um, very high quality, heavy part. Um, I'd like to take it apart, but I don't have any extras, so I'm not gonna risk it. All right, so here's the part that's still on the transmission. So now we have to figure out how this comes out. So we saw in the, in the 1970 service manual that that came out um, using a slide hammer and a special tool. I don't have a slide hammer and I don't have a special tool. So what, is, what material is this made out of here? Feels like, feels like a pl plastic. So I definitely don't wanna pull on that, I don't think. Pull on it with my hands and see. It's not coming anywhere. Okay, um, so I'm guessing that is the speedometer gear and the, uh, um, the output shaft that um, connects it to the drive cable here. So I don't think that's coming out. I think this um, this whole part that gets threaded onto has to come out. Okay, so that happened really fast. So I was initially right. So the seals do go inside the part that goes in the transmission where I have this rag now and gear oil is dripping out, um, which is wonderful because I hate gear oil. Um, so how I got it out since I wasn't filming it took me a while to figure it out. So here's the piece that goes into the transmission. You see the hole where the pin goes in. Um, and there's also a gear on it that drives onto the transmission. So this section here is just pressed in and you have to pull it out. Um, so since I didn't have the factory puller, what I did was I um, threaded the 90 degree angle drive back on it gently. And uh, I, I used, um, I could get a little bit of grip on this nut and I was able to pull it out with that. And I also put a 22 millimeter wrench on there and kind of wedged it and um, help, that helped me pull it out. And, and as you can see, I didn't ruin any of the threads. So we're gonna rebuild this in the kitchen. And um, sorry for being pretty excited about this part because it's, isn't that just cool looking? I mean, uh, it's, it's neat. It's a, uh, you can tell it was turned on a lathe. It looks like you can feel the um, you can feel the the marks from where it was turned. It's just a very nice part. Uh, these were made by VDO, as you can see there, made in Germany, probably around 1969. Well, well, here we go. This might be a a year mark here. Let's see there, 170. So. That might not mean what, my car was made in January of 1970, so it's possible, if not likely, that this part was uh, actually made in 
170, and that stands for January 1970. It's possible. Um, so my guess here on how this goes apart is you take out this, uh, feels like plastic, um, plastic gear piece. See, it moves. Yeah, it's being held in, it's being held in by capillary action, so it should come out. Let's see, inner seal, outer seal, cable. Yeah, so it should, it should pull out, I think. Okay, so um, in here is the inner seal, and right here is our outer O-ring. So here's the new parts that Opal GT Source sent. Let's take a look at how those look. It might be that that inner seal um, keeps the gear cable from going through. Um, in fact, I can almost guarantee that it looks like a sort of cup seal. It's got a ridge inside of it. Okay, I grabbed me a couple of different picks. I'm gonna try and see if I can dig that um, that inner seal out with this. So this inner seal should be where I'm getting my gear oil leakage. It it sh it should be the one that's compromised because I'm leaking out of the um, the speedometer cable is what it looks like. So this should be the culprit. All right, so um, I got my pick in there, and I was able to break this old hard seal in half. So now all you gotta do is pull it out. So here's the old seal. And now, look at that. She's free. So I'm going to clean this very thoroughly. Um, Gil at Opal GT Source recommended um, to clean it, make sure there are no, uh, there's no pitting, there's uh, no dust or anything in there. Um, clean this housing as well. He did say that this is self-contained unit, as I, as I noticed with the cap on the top. Um, so don't worry about trying to grease this or anything. It should be fine if it was working before. Um, right, so we got the gear cleaned up. Uh, this one's in perfect shape. Notice that there's no scoring or anything on the plastic. Um, the uh, the gear itself, uh, there's not any really sharp edges or anything. It's nice and uniform, no cuts. Um, you want to make sure that this cable here is still fairly straight. Mine's a little bent, as you can see when I twist it. But this is a flexible cable, so it's going to be okay. Um, these can break in the middle pretty easily. Um, as you can imagine, if the speedometer cable gets kinked uh, on the other end of the 90 degree angle drive, all of a sudden this is gonna bind and twist and, uh, and it'll break. So if you suddenly don't have, aren't getting any um, response from your speedometer, I would look here. All right, so I'm gonna try and uh, get the outer seal out now too. Um, Ooh, that is hard. Yeah, this is going to be a tough little guy to get out. It's a it's an old rubber seal and it's really hard. Let's see if I can get under it with this one maybe. Ooh, almost. There we go. No. There we go. Got it. Okay. So I'm not going to have to break it if I can get my hooked pick under there. There we go. Now. Now it's not gonna go anywhere. Let's get this pulled out and I'll try and, yeah, there we go. And it went behind the refrigerator so we don't get to look at the old seal. So I'm not going back there. So let's clean up the slot where it went in. Okay, so I don't, the outer one I don't think needs to be lubed. It might help when you put it on to lube it. Um, put it back in the transmission. Um, let's see, let's be smart about this. Let's put it on this side first, where it'll, haha. <laughs> yeah, be smart, put it on this side. Don't put it on this side first, because it's gonna be hard to get over that lip. Yep, and then just roll that sucker on there. Bam. Okay, and now, here's the tricky part. So, here's the, the little cup seal, the inner seal. The flat side is going to face to the outside, like this. See, this is the flat side. If you put it in like this, you're wrong. 
So first things first, put your speedometer drive cable back in, just like that. And we're gonna need to lube this up with some gear oil so it doesn't burn up. Okay, did I mention I hate gear oil? Um, anyway, I got this lubed up uh, from the drippings from the transmission. Okay, so it should just slip over, just like, let me get into in the camera. Uh, I got a better idea. Okay, so I grabbed an eight millimeter socket. So I um, now I can put this down. <laughs> yeah, never that easy, is it? All right, so let's try it again. All right, so put our seal in. Press it in with the, with the socket. And now we're gonna put our speedometer drive angle through, or not the angle, the cable through until it just touches. Now I'm gonna put my socket in there and press against that while simultaneously pressing down on the whole assembly. Oh, I think, I think I got it. Okay, let's see. Voila. The seal is in place. Let me just see if I can press it down some more just for good measure. All right, she's in there. Nice and smooth, it's still turning good. Wiggles just about as much as it did before. So we are in good shape. Um, let me clean this up. So we can test real quick, make sure that everything's still together properly. Uh, make sure our threads are still good before we go and try and put it on the transmission. Um, so it looks like it's threading on good. There we go. So that's about as far on as it goes. So I'm turning the gear right now. Let me get it. See, you can still see that the angle drive is engaged. So we are all set to put it back on the car. Welcome to the lake of gear oil. <sighs> and let's pull out our rag that didn't do a damn thing. Wipe up some of this extra gear oil and clean out the inside of this housing so it'll be easier to get in there. I'm gonna spray some WD-40 in there. So now we should be able to get everything in there nice and smooth. Okay, so I'm gonna leave all of this, um, let me get in the shot. I'm gonna leave all this connected for my first attempt at this. Um, I think it might be easier to have an extra, you know, a uh, handhold to get all this on. So let's give this a go. Press that in. Let's, let's, um, so here's the slot. So let's face that part downward. Not the slot, it's the hole that the pin goes in if you didn't see it on the camera. Okay, so now let's press it in the rest of the way. Ooh, that is tight. All right, so I got it in there. So um, I tried a couple different things to get it in. So I ended up taking off the 90 degree angle drive because I didn't want to hit on that. Um, but what ended up getting it for me uh, is I took a long screwdriver and I, oh, let me grab, grab the screwdriver so I can demonstrate. And then I just, um, I put the screwdriver on this lip here, the very bottom um, of this assembly, and just tap, 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 and it went in. Um, make sure you have the hole lined up um, where the pin goes into, right here. We'll be putting that pin in in just a second. And uh, put the car in neutral and disable your parking brake, and make sure you have at least one wheel lifted off the ground. And... Uh, Make sure that when you turn the drive shaft, here we go, that this thing very, very slowly spins. I don't know if you can even see that on camera. Let me, let me turn, let me use my leg to turn the wheel instead. I can get it a little faster than the drive shaft. There we go. So yeah, you can see that spinning very, very slowly. There's the drive shaft onto the torque tube, to the differential, to my leg. All right, so now we're gonna try and uh, get that little pin back in there. 
I have a feeling that this won't be as hard as I think it will be, if that makes any sense. So, everything was lined up a few seconds ago before I started filming, so, all right, so stick that in there. And I'm gonna get a hammer. I don't really care about the end of this anymore because I can get it out again, I know, without it, with vice grips. So, tap, tap, tap. And she is in, friends. And you just screw on your um, 90 degree angle drive. Um, make sure it's, fa and, well, it doesn't matter. It's gonna end up facing wherever you need it anyway. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the the cable on onto it correctly. Um, once you do, it will fully, it'll go all the way in there. And now, just gotta, Finagle your fingers in there and screw it on all the way. Okay, looks like we're tight. So, if you have a smaller 22 millimeter wrench that's open end, this will be a heck of a lot easier. Um, but they always make these gigantic. Uh, so, you don't want to over torque this, just make sure it's not going to back off. So I think, I think what I just did there was good. So now we just um, got to put our uh, Speedo cable back on. Yeah, you just uh, put your cable back in there. And then you can test it out and see if um, your problems are gone. You should no longer have any leaks coming out of this anymore. And um, possibly by cleaning up all that stuff in the inside, you might not even have a jumpy spe uh, speedometer anymore. So. There's a lot of good that can come from this little, um, this little service here. So, my speedometer is a little bit less bouncy. Um, it's still got a little bit of bounce to it, but I think that's on account of, uh, that my, the end of my speedometer cable is, uh, not connected correctly because the previous owner split it. Um, so, overall, I'd say that this, uh, this was a very successful teardown and, uh, resealing operation. Um, I guess time will tell if it's still leaking or not. Um, it shouldn't, but 